new bed I just put in. This is a test bed. There can be nothing but test roses in here. We'll just line them up, take a look at them. If we don't like them, we'll just rip them out and move on and put some new ones in their place. But it gives me a chance to talk a little bit about preparing a new rose bed, which I cover in the book a lot. Basically, here's the steps that I took. First of all, I started this about eight weeks ago to give the bed a chance to settle, but also to allow the rain to penetrate and really loosen up that soil deep down in. That way the roses can get their roots really deep. So the first thing I did, now I have a tractor so I can put a subsoil on the back, but anything that you can do to rip that bed down deep, even a rototiller, will kind of get going and get the bed started. So that's the first thing you want to do. I then dumped about six inches of composted horse manure on this thing. Any kind of compost will do. Mushroom compost, compost you make your own, oak leaves from last year, that's fine. The idea is to get compost on the bed. That's what those beneficial microbes need in order to eat. That's what they live off of, basically. At that point, I also then subsoiled it again, or you can rototill it again, and I let it sit for about five to six weeks and let the rain penetrate it, and every time it rained, I opened it back up again and just allowed that to continue. So all that stuff began to settle in and mix together really well. So here I am eight weeks later, I've got a test bed, and remember, I live in Georgia red clay, or South Carolina red clay, where it's very, very heavy. The nice thing about this is I'm going to have no problem digging a hole, and I don't have to dig a two-foot two hole either. I realize this takes a little more work up front, and you're absolutely right in that sense of the word. It's eight weeks of preparation, you're working it over and over and over again, but this is going to save me lots and lots and lots of labor in the years to come because I took the time to prepare my bed correctly. Brought you in closer to dig this hole because you can see what kind of soil I've got. More importantly, it's not what kind of soil I've got right here in this hole where the rose is going to go, but because I prepared my entire bed, every bit of it, every piece of soil in here, every square foot is exactly the same. Why is that important? Because that means whatever these roots of these roses go, they're going to encounter good, nutritious soil. Why is that important? That's important because, as we've talked about before, any time a plant has got a good nutritious diet that makes it healthier. And that health of that plant, because of this soil, is my first line of defense against diseases and other kinds of things that can bother these plants. You can also see how delightfully easy it is to dig in here. So my first line of defense is the fact that the entire bed has this kind of soil in it. There you have it. We planted about 45 roses in here so far. We've got some more that are going to be going over in here from someone else. These are all from a Breeder named Mike Athey, so we'll be watching these all season long to see how they do. The nice thing again, I know though, again, just to reiterate, by preparing my entire bed, I know that these roses are going to find everything they need, no matter where their roots go. This is Old Yellow Scotch, a pimpinifolia. I love this thing. It uh, blooms in spring for about four weeks, and it's usually one of the first roses to bloom. And it's lying on the ground. It's a young plant. It'll build itself into more of a bush later on, probably about three feet by three feet. But they're just charming, charming roses, the entire Pimpinifolia series. And this is one of my favorites. This is the angle you can really see this building at its best. That's souvenir to Madame Lee and Evino in full bloom. This is Flamenco Rosita, an outstanding shrub that's just one of the healthiest roses in my garden. Absolutely blooms from spring to fall. Terrific rose. I'm going to pull back another shot and show you the entire bush. Here you can see the entire plant. It just grows this way, it has this beautiful shape to it, beautiful to be mass planted, it'd be great as a hedge as well. Oliver Rollinger. This is a Delbard rose, it hasn't been released yet, but hopefully we'll be releasing it fairly soon. I'll also pull back and give you another shot of the entire plant. That's the entire plant of Oliver Rollinger. Very upright growth habit. My good friend Bob Martin, outstanding rose grower in San Diego, California, loves this rose, and Bob knows his stuff. This is Rev Dor, a rose I've never been without in any garden I've ever had. One of my favorite climbing noisettes of all time. This one's something a little bit different. We're on a road trip. We're heading to Atlanta, Georgia. About a year and a half ago, I was contacted by the family of Dr. Martin Luther King and Coretta Scott King to help develop a rose for, for Mrs. King. Well, we f I found one. Uh, Weeks Roses, Christian Bedard hybridized it. It is now the Coretta Scott King Rose, and today in Atlanta at the King Center is the ceremonial planting of the rose, and they invited me to come down. So this, <laughs> I'm nervous. This is something pretty cool. This is the site where the rose will be planted. First we go into Freedom Hall for a ceremony. 
um, on behalf of the King Center and the entire King family for you celebrating our mother's uh, special 86th uh, birthday with us. Uh, just for a brief moment, I want to talk about how we got to this day in terms of the roles. A few years ago, a gentleman by the name of T.J. David of the International World Peace Rose Gardens approached us about uh, creating a rose named in honor of our mother. And uh, uh, of course, uh, I knew of our mom's love of roses and felt that it would be a great way to honor her legacy of peace and love for all people over the world. We had to find, though, the right rose. And those who know anything about uh, roses, those who grow roses, Paul Zimmerman, who's here, uh, who is working with us as well, um, it takes time to, uh, to, to breed roses, to grow roses, um, and even find the exact rose that fits the personality and the character of the individual. And so uh, we finally were able to find that rose. We wanted, one to we wanted to identify a rose that was capable of reflecting her beauty, her dignity, and her grace. And also, we wanted to uh, identify one who, uh, rose that was capable of growing strong and tall in a variety of climates, much of the way our mom stood tall in the midst of challenging times and environments. And so, after a few years of searching, the eye-catching grandiflora was found. And today, we are debuting the Coretta Scott King Rose Tag, an American symbol of peace and love. Just did a bit of research and, wow, didn't realize it, but it is a, a cream color predominantly. Um, and uh, uh, there are highlights of coral orange on the edges. But the cream color represents understated elegance, purity, and softness. And as I thought about calm, I thought about Martin, how Daddy uh, uh, commented when the home was bombed, you know, how calm our mother was during that time. I was amazed by her calmness. And she maintained that sense of calmness throughout the movement, especially when there were very challenging and difficult and threatening times. And then the color coral orange, the word that came was pride, and the, the, the synonym, uh, the word dignity, and we've talked about the dignity and the honor of Coretta Scott King. And so we are honored and happy uh, to celebrate this day and to unveil and debut this beautiful rose, and we thank you again uh, for sharing this time and this moment with us, family, and with us at King Center. God bless you, and we will move now to the laying of the wreath, uh, followed by the rose planting in the garden. Have a wonderful afternoon. quite a day. Uh, I don't think I'll ever have one like this again. It was an amazing experience and there's moments when you know things just transcend what you do for a living and this was certainly one of them. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm glad you were able to come with me and uh, I'll never forget this day.